Hi, this is Greg Hughes from 90 Second Website Builder. I'd like to talk to you in this video about the jQuery objects. These are some of the tools that you can use to design your website with this great software. Now, in another video, I talked to you about the jQuery theme. That's a related topic in that the jQuery objects we're going to be discussing here get their look or their layout from the jQuery theme, which is part of your page settings. We won't go into that in this video. We're mostly going to talk about how to use the tools that are included in the jQuery jQuery user interface tools. That theme is something that's part of the page or the page properties. In fact, if you go up to the page menu and click on page properties, like we did in the theme video, under the style tab, it shows us what our page's jQuery theme is. And in this video, I'm just going to stick with this one theme called Pepper Grinder for now. But as I said in the other video, you can learn how to change themes, edit themes, use the theme manager to do that. But let's get right to the tools themselves. And we'll start right here in the section of the toolbox that shows all of the jQuery user interface tools. So for example, the jQuery accordion tool and the jQuery tabs tool are both similar in that you might call them content holders. They're ways of displaying content on your page in a very streamlined way, kind of a way of saving space on your website and having your content show actually in a really cool way. So we'll demonstrate those tools. Those are probably the two most common jQuery tools you'd use. There are some other tools here that you would only use if you were creating, say, a form, if you're using some of the form tools. In fact, the form tools themselves are up here, form controls, and there are some jQuery form controls, but of course they're down here in the jQuery menu. So those would be things like autocomplete, a jQuery button, the jQuery date picker. These are things that you would include in a form. Now these three things, the progress bar, the slider, and the spinner, these are the more advanced jQuery tools. The only way you would use these is if you are using what's called the events function. An event is the closest thing you'll come to actually programming without having to write code. You can create a very high level functionality on your website by using events. Events are things that trigger other objects to do something, either appear or move or disappear or change their status, for example. These jQuery objects are designed to be coordinated and triggered by those events. We're going to talk about those in other videos. So if you want to learn how to start using events, then you will learn how to use these objects there. The jQuery tabs, like I said, is a content holder. I'll demonstrate that in a minute. And then the jQuery tooltip actually does kind of what you're seeing right now. You notice how when I hover over these, the software actually will uh, tooltip, that's called. When that little window comes up, when you hover over something, that's called the tooltip. Well, you can actually make a custom tooltip for the objects on your website with the jQuery tooltip tool. Okay, so that's a real quick overview on what they do. And so we're going to just talk about some of them, the ones that you're going to most often use. And that would be, first of all, the jQuery accordion here at the top. So I'm selecting the jQuery accordion tool, just drawing a box. And you can see it gives me a starting accordion with four categories. Now, a jQuery accordion is just a tool that is broken up into categories. Here they're called items, and of course this is all editable. And then the space in between is called the content area. This is where we can put just about anything from image, text, links, even videos, and even forms can go inside here. Just about anything you can imagine can go inside here. There's one thing that should not go inside a jQuery object though, and that is another jQuery object because it just gets really messy code-wise and some things just might not work right. So you can put virtually anything inside these objects except for another jQuery object. As you stretch the jQuery accordion down like this, the content area gets larger for each section. And as you want to edit what these say, you just double click on it, bring up the jQuery accordion properties. There you can see your items. I'm going to click edit and change this to whatever I would want that category to say. Click OK, and now I have a category called About Us. I can put in images. Here's an image here. And again, you'll see the blue highlight. That means we've successfully placed it inside the object here. Here's some text. Maybe we'll squeeze this down a little bit so that it fits. Here's another category here. We could name that by editing it. Another object here. Let's take this one and put another object here. OK, so I'm going to hit F5 to test this. And there's my jQuery accordion. And you notice it looks uh, a lot like the uh, jQuery object over here. And as I click on these areas, they expand. And it's just a great way of showing content without taking up a lot of space on your website. And of course, it just actually looks cool too. And again, these could be links. There could be a video in here. Just about anything you can imagine could go in here. 
that's basically how the jQuery accordion tool works. Let me show you a couple things that are kind of important about this. I'm going to double click and go to the style. The way the content displays, uh, you can change with this animation. I had it set on linear, that's the default, but you can change these uh, just in a, in a very, very subtle way. I would say just experiment with these and find what you like, but you'll see that you could make it actually, um, you know, move a little bit different. Let me pick one here that's called bounce. And you'll see that when we test it in F5, the way the content is displayed is slightly different. See, it sort of bounces up, bounces down, and there's other bounces uh, to choose from. I'm going to double click again so you can see under the style tab that there's an attribute here called active. This allows me to choose which of the content areas will be expanded by default. We have, in this particular case, four content areas. And so when the page loads, this first one is going to be expanded automatically, but it doesn't have to be. If I wanted item three to be the expanded one by default, I could change that. You can choose that by picking these numbers, and it, it may not make sense to you, but it's kind of a programming thing. If I choose the number one, that actually means the second area will be open by default. Zero was the first area, and one is the second area. I know that's a little confusing, but that's just kind of geeky code stuff. So I'll show you what I mean. If I wanted the third one to be open by default, I would then pick the number two, click OK. Let's do an F5. And now you'll notice the first thing that was open was the third area, number two in my selection. You can control which one is open by default. And then, of course, users can always change that. The other similar tool is the jQuery tabs tool. Now I already have one out here and I even have some content in it. I have five content areas in this case. Here I have some text, some text and a form. Here's a blank one I haven't filled in yet and one where I just have some text. Here's another form. This is a form I got from Aweber. So I use the HTML tool to put my code in there. And then this form I created with uh, the form tools up here in the toolbox. Let's take a look at it. I'm going to click F5. So again, here's this first area. It's got an image and text. It's got an Aweber form. This goes to my autoresponder account. If I click this tab, it changes to this one. Here's another one where they could fill out a form on my website. And then here's that blank page I haven't filled in yet, and then some text. You'll notice as I change, there's a little bit of a fade. Well, that's because I chose that in the attributes of this particular object. The jQuery tabs lets me control that. Let me close this and show you. When I double click on it, there you can see the categories I created. And under the style, I chose use fade transition effect. You can also put the tabs on the bottom of the object by clicking here. And of course you can change the font, etc. The jQuery dialog is one that you would trigger an event with. The date picker works with forms. Here's a nice little uh, navigation menu, jQuery menu. Just click on it, draw a box again, and you can see it's pretty self-explanatory. As we click on this, we can design our menu with items and sub-items, sub-sub-items. It can also go horizontally. Click OK. Let's click F5. And you can see we just have basically a menu that's got sub-items and sub-sub-items. Just another way to make a menu that matches the jQuery theme. A very simple, simple tool to use. Also, we have the jQuery progress bar and slider and spinner. Again, those would be triggered by events. The jQuery tabs we talked about. Now, to use the jQuery tooltip, it's kind of interesting. Let me draw a box out here. You can put this in the bottom corner of your web page. Nobody's going to see this. Instead, what this does is this adds a little effect to any other object on your website. I'll use this image. First thing I have to know is what the ID of this image is. In the properties menu will tell me, since I've selected this image, that the ID of this image is called index image seven. That's not the file name, that's the ID of this image. And I need to know that if I'm going to use it here in my jQuery tooltip. What I'm gonna do is I want a little tooltip to pop up when people hover their mouse over this image. So here's how it works. I double click on jQuery tooltip, it brings up the properties. I'm looking for the object ID that this was. If you remember, index image seven, that's the ID. So now I can apply this effect to index image seven, which happens to be this, and I can decide how this tooltip shows. Let's make it slide, and we're gonna have some information here. I'll just put my name for now. And of course I could use different fonts, sizes, and colors, and all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna click OK. Now watch what happens when I click F5. Notice the tooltip box is gonna be invisible. Again, that can go anywhere on the website. That would probably, we'd probably want to put that down in the corner. But what happens is we have a little sliding tooltip. You see how it comes into play? And it's got the text. 
So we just basically said when any anytime someone hovers over that, we just want a little bit of information to pop up next to it. Now, where it shows and how it looks, of course, is all changeable right here. I chose slide. I'm going to change that to fade. I can also change the position of it when it pops up. It's in the left top. I can change that to the right and how far it's offset. Okay, so I've made a couple of changes. Let's do F5. Watch what happens now. You'll notice it's off to the right. But that's how we can make a real simple tooltip. And what's great about it being a jQuery object is that little window matches the theme or the style of all of my other jQuery objects here on the page. Let me close this. So as I said, some of these objects are used with some more advanced programming like events. We won't go into that here. But some of these you may use as you create forms. So if we were up here in the form tools and we were creating a form and in that form area we wanted to have name, email, and uh, all those kinds of things that make a form work. We can actually add jQuery objects to our forms. In fact, I ha I've got a form over here, and you can see I haven't used a jQuery um, object in here, but we could. But let's, let's make another form and add the jQuery object so you can see what they do. I'm going to click on the jQuery date picker, for example. Now, this is just a field where somebody's going to pick a date. Of course, I'd want to label it, and then as I double click on this, there are some attributes I can decide the format I want that date to appear in, and so you can change that here. How it animates and how it shows and all of the things that you would expect, like font size and whatnot. Click OK. Click F5. So when you click on this field, you'll notice that a calendar pops up so that the person can select the date from the calendar. And by the way, it defaulted to today's date. I'm making this video January 29th, 2014, so it started me off right there. And if I pick this date, it fills that in based on the format that I chose. So that's a really great tool to add to your forms if you want people to select a date. And you can make that look just about any way you want to. Let's double click on that again. We can have a default date already in there, which we could type in here. Or we can even have it use the current date to be the default, which you can see it just selected that. I can also change the way the calendar shows. We can make it sort of fade in a little bit differently here. So let's try that. I'm going to do an F5. There it's showing the default date, today's date. If I click in here, there is my faded in calendar. We can change the date by going to another one and fill it in like that. Very simple tool to use and really handy. But it has to be part of a form. That's a form tool that happens to be a jQuery object. Another form tool you might want to use is the jQuery button. Simply draw it out here. And you could use this as your submit button. You'll notice uh, in my form over here, I have a button that says send. But it always looks like that because that's the default look for a form button. But if you use the jQuery object, you can make the button look nice and may make it match the rest of the page theme. You double click on this and you tell it what kind of button you want it to be. So if I want it to be a submit button, I would click submit button, click OK, and now that's my submit button. Also, I would relabel it. I forgot to do that. That happens here. I could say send and it's going to be technically a submit button as part of my form tools. Click OK. And now I've got a send button that just looks better. Let's click F5 to see what that looks like. And it kind of highlights when we hover over it. it looks a lot better than, say, this one. So this is, this is a jQuery object in a form, and this is not. OK, let's close that preview. The other thing about the jQuery button is it doesn't have to be used in a form. You can use this independently if you use it correctly. Here's what I mean. So I'm going to take it out of the form. I'll put it down here. If I just wanted to use this as a regular old button that links to something, I can as long as when I double click on it, I tell the software that I'm going to be using it as a link button. That's really important. The rest of these have to be used in a form. But if I just want to use it as a link button, I can do that. And of course, I can change the label. And then I would set the link to wherever I want it to link to, either a page in this project or an external website. But it's just a great way to make simple button that links somewhere as long as you select that. That's kind of important. So that pretty much covers the most common jQuery tools you're going to use. Again, some of these have to be used in forms. Some of these have to be triggered by events. And the most common ones you're going to use are, of course, the jQuery tabs, the jQuery accordion. But just remember, it's a great set of tools to use because it coordinates with the rest of your website. Since the jQuery objects pick up their look or their layout from the theme, it can really make the websites that you're creating with 90 Second Website Builder look really good and really sophisticated. So I hope you enjoy using those tools.